Hi, my name is Mark Litorno, and I would like to present to you uh, a third argument about uh, the uh, idea that God does not exist. In the two first video, the, the, I presented a logic that showed that there is no God creator of the universe. And in this presentation, I will show um, the rationale of why there is no God creator of life. And uh, so we have... Um, the theories that exist to explain life on Earth is the, the first one is uh, the evolution theory. And the evolution theory is based on two principles. The first basic uh, principle is mutation. And the second is natural selection. Um, the thing is, this is to explain how life evolved, not how it originated. And uh, this is another question. Uh, the, the thing is that uh, you need a, a, a good mutation, so after that, natural selection, select the individuals um, against the others and propagate that, that branch of mutation. Uh, the problem with that is that there is no uh, positive mutation. There is no advantageous mutation. Mutation is, you know, the DNA, the DNA code is like that. And, and if, uh, if you have a random accident, because mutations are based on random accident, you know, rays or chemicals that, you know, are in food. So uh, if, the, if, if a random event occurs in the DNA code, you're going to break it. You're not going to improve it. It's not by uh, taking uh, uh, poetry and, and, and shooting letters randomly that you're going to improve the poetry. This is not a good argument. And uh, they believe that it's a fate. Believing that mutation and random events can create and modify information is a fate. And not a very good one in the sense that it's not... The evidence is showing the opposite. The evidence is showing that random events do not create information or modify it in a better way. That's what I mean. Especially for the DNA code, which is so complex. The only thing that the natural selection is doing here is preserving the DNA code as original as possible, eliminating the defect caused by the mutation. And that's what is happening here. That's what we observe. We don't observe evolution. We observe degeneration through mutations. So a theory based on that, implying evolution, is not, it doesn't fit the facts. So um, here, uh, since uh, it doesn't make sense that random events amelior ameliorate the DNA, the information of the DNA, and since the uh, agent that we know about that create and modify information is human intelligent, so that's why... Uh, we can infer that there was an intelligent designer. Now, is this involve a God? No. Because the agent that we know about, that create information and modify it, is human. It's us. It's not God. We modify information. We create information. And so, this is pointing to us. We are able to do that. We will in the future. But if we were not there in the past to make it, who did it? The only scientific and rational explanation or source of the design is human or is life form coming from another planet. And Francis Crick, who co-discovered the DNA structure, has written a book before, you know, uh, some time ago, you know, uh, Life Itself, where he made the hypothesis that life has been seeded by extraterrestrial intelligence. He is there, almost. And he's a smart guy. Uh, Enrico Fermi, 
who discovered um, the nuclear reactor and had got a Nobel Prize too. He, 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 uh, he developed an idea uh, that I'm going to develop further here, uh, and let's do it now. <clears throat> I make the assumption that science has no limits. I think it's a pretty good assumption because, you know, everything we see and everything we observe is showing us the evidence that science is progressing more and more. Not only is it progressing continually, it's progressing in an exponential curve. We, we are accelerating our discoveries with time. So, uh, so we can forecast that in the future we'll be able to create life and travel faster into space because we'll make discoveries that we have no idea about right now. And so we are here, a little planet into space, a little vessel traveling to space, and uh, in a few thousand years from now we'll go to another planet, another solar system, that can receive life. And uh, according to some calculation, it would take about 22,000 years for a population to grow on this planet to our level, you know, that will reach a level of technology that we have right now, that we have right now. And, uh, you know, you can put another 5,000 years, if you want, for them to develop the technology to go to another planet and create life too, right? And meanwhile, we're not going to have our arms uh, just pending here. We're going to go <laughs> create life too. And uh, them, they will continue, and them too, you know, that will be uh, uh, exponential. It's like uh, if you put a uh, uh, mouse trap in a room full of uh, ping pong balls, and you close the door and you just throw a ping pong ball, in, only one in the room, and, and it would fall in one mouse trap mouse trap that will release two others while this one rebound on some others and it will be uh, uh, an accelerating reaction and that's what is doing here and I we can calculate that uh, it would take about only one million year to populate our own galaxies uh, and assuming that you have one suitable planet to put life on it in each solar system and it would take only two million years to populate the whole known universe in two million years we would be able to propagate life in the whole known universe on each solar system with one life form so just to show you the power of this propagation over evolution. Evolution is so slow. I mean, 3.5 billion years only for one life. Uh, and this is 2 million years only to, for the whole universe. I mean, uh, 10 power 26 uh, humanities. So, um, <clears throat> so you can see, you, you, you can feel where I'm going right now. Because if we can do that in the future, you just need a life form two million years ago in the past here to be able to create life everywhere in the universe and we will be the fruit of that simply <laughs>